Oh no, I'm I'm honestly forgetting his name. No, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Jordan Peterson. Oh, Jordan Peterson. Oh, yeah. okay. I was going to say. Hear about that. It's yeah. crazy and the whole thing, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I guess we'll enter into Jordan Peterson. It's a good Peterson idea, but it's a good here, idea. Bro. I mean, every, everybody should read some uh, some marks. And it is a good idea to have a bigger understanding of how the economy actually works at a foundation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and I don't know. I don't know. You know, I go on Young Turks sometimes and stuff, and I'm friendly with other YouTubers, but I don't really, I don't know what everybody's always thinking day to day, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay, so from there, I guess we can jump into Jordan Peterson. Uh, something that's interesting <laughs> is, out of the kind of newsy outlets on on YouTube and on the left, there are other people who are going after Peterson, but specifically in the news and politics category. It seems yeah. like the majority report, you and Sam Cedar are really the only ones going after him. I thought the funniest one was where you did the video about his meltdown, where he's like, calling Pankaj Mishra like a sanctimonious prick and saying, if you're in the same room as me, I'd slap you happily. Slap you, know? you happily, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the, anytime, man, if you're at like a club in New York or something and one guy says, I'll slap you happily, that's when you, it's about to happen. It's about to go things down. Things get yeah, real serious. <laughs> well, I was just curious what your thoughts on his rise are and just the cultish fan base of his. I mean, I don't know, man. You basically said it. it uh, it's a cult. Uh, I, I'm always, I am trying to get more, I mean, I'm trying to look at, like, what is it that he, like, what purpose is he serving for people? I think part of it is that, you know, that kind of mashup where part of it is he's just sort of basically just being, like, a good, you know, kind of doing basic self-help kind of motivational yeah. stuff. And I think, you know, people need that. Do you and, think that's what and, puts him up, though? Because I honestly don't know why he's popular. I think it's no. I think it's a combination. I think it's a combination. I do think the self help stuff is part of it. I think there's a lot of guys in search of a father figure. To be honest with you, mm-hmm. uh, I also think it's funny because I think that now it's subtle, but the media space has changed a little bit, even for like people on the far right. And I think that actually the fact that he's so emotional mm-hmm. and he cries <laughs> and he freaks out. I think people actually like that. Really? I think they find it. I think they find it genuine. You know, I mean, I don't know. I, it's not my thing. I, I, you know, but I think that. And I also think, though, it's just the same reason that all this other stuff gets popular. He's he's telling a story that's very self-justifying, and it's also it's it's the master jujitsu move that all these guys have. Is that first they take little things which might even be true like in their own terms. Like maybe, I don't know, maybe some kids are being uh, dumb on a college campus or whatever. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe people are too uptight about what, you know, whatever. Things that honestly are relatively trivial yeah. or might only affect you in a very small way in your life because even all this college campus stuff is is relative to like the mass of things going on is nothing. Right. And you take this thing... And, and mostly bullshit and mostly a right wing fantasy. Yeah. But then you uh, you inflate a little thing and you make it the whole world. And then ironically, a lot of it is, you know, this kind of funny double game where like uh, you know, everybody it's like, oh, identity politics is so awful except for the identity politics that I'm doing. Yeah. And he's doing identity politics of basically like you know sort of disillusioned frustrated mainly young angry white men that's and that's like. why it's and that's why it's so cult like and so fanatical because yeah. you know these guys like that's what i had to understand because when i first came into this like and i still totally don't get it i would criticize somebody like i mean sam harris is another one of these you know and and in his case it's just unbelievable because he's so fucking boring but you would criticize some of these people and the response like i can't think of anybody like i'm i uh, uh actors uh tennis players i like uh you know rappers politicians there is almost nobody in the world outside of my like immediate family or close friends that i would ever have the kind of emotional meltdown about that people do about these people Mm-hmm. So, like, if you criticize somebody I like, I'll say, hey, no, I think you're wrong, or, oh, or even maybe, oh, yeah, that's a fair point, but you're missing whatever. 
But the way these people have, these guys have these like total emotional meltdowns if you criticize yeah. them, mm -hmm. that, I mean, it is, as you say, it's cult-like, but it also shows that it's, it's, it's fulfilling a very deep emotional need in them. That's true. And I think that that's, uh, you know, that that's what's going on. And I also, you know, I think that's, it's super, the last thing I'll say too is it's pretty funny to me. And I say this like, I crit I have crit criticisms of identity politics from my you know more socialist perspective, mm -hmm. but it is mind blowing that guys who run around all day basically telling people like if Jordan Peterson was black mm -hmm. with his the sense of aggrievement and emotionality that this guy has because of like some annoying like what, stuff on a college campus. Mm -hmm. If he had a life where he actually dealt with something like American racism on a daily basis, yeah. he would either need to be a way more balanced, mature, non-crying person, mm -hmm. or he might be like a member of Al Qaeda or something. <laughs> like these, like these people who run around talking about stop being victims and yeah. commenting on all of the like, oh, I don't want to hear about you being a woman or black or Muslim or gay or yeah. whatever. Like, shut the fuck up. It's not, you're not rational, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. These are the biggest bitches in the world. Yep. Because somebody was rude because, oh, you said Republicans are dumb or, I mean, <laughs> I mean these, that, to me is the most crazy part of it because I've actually dealt with some you know like assholes but at least like it's cool it's like that really just is their position like toughen up yeah. okay fair enough but these motherfuckers are <laughs> whining complaining yeah. little bitches about nothing right. and building an identity politics around it I mean the irony is endless did you did you uh, did you hear his comment on Joe Rogan saying he found a way to monetize SJWs? Did you hear that or no? I didn't, but he did. He's right. Yeah, uh, I thought that was funny just because, and I was wondering kind of your thoughts on that because, uh, like a lot of people, like I had seen like a Steven Crowder tweet writing an article about that and like saying like basically praising him as this kind of epic troll and other people because I was looking for backlash. I was like, okay, where's the backlash? Because obviously as a conflict of interest at this point if it's a monetary gain because then you're just going to inflate a problem to a point where you can just make more money and well dude you just you just described all of it sorry that's, to interrupt. that's what it seems like no yeah uh, that's it that's yeah. the whole thing that's yeah. that describes all of them they're inflating something to monetize to make, look dude, if you wake up in the morning yeah and you look at this whole fucking world mm -hmm. and you are like wow there was some some fucking girl at Oberlin was, you know, she said that, uh, you know, Pop-Tarts were cultural appropriation. <laughs> That's what I'm going to focus on. Well, yeah, I mean, come on, man. Let's be serious. But it's really easy content. I mean, yeah. if I wanted to become right wing and play to, like, oh, whoever so these fucking... Easy. It's the easiest shit in the world. It's like, all right, let me find an audience of, like, I don't know, like, aspiring Thai sex tourists or whoever the fuck it is that watches this shit and go out and be like, you know what I feel like? like I just, like, can't say what I think, like, like what I feel anymore. <laughs> yeah. Boom. It's the, it's easy. It's the easiest content in the world. And I, and, But on the other hand, like, if you read... um. It's a really good book by this woman that I've had on, and she made the rounds. Uh, Angela Nagel, she wrote this really good book called Kill All Normies. And I think, like, you know, like all of the, um, you know, they're not the same. Like, SJWs, as annoying as they could be, are obviously better than the right wing, you know, backlash because things like racism and sexism are actual things that we should actually oppose if yeah. we're normal functional people right. but um but at the same time you know they built a perfect foil for these people and i think that like on the flip side if if all your understanding of politics is just like arguing about people's comedy routines yeah. or you know who gets to speak or who doesn't get to speak like then you're not doing politics right you know it's our job to say first of all you guys are fucking idiots Right. You don't know what you're talking about. And then to say, like, you know, like Jordan Peterson, he's running his mouth about Marx all the time, saying Marxism and postmodernism are the same thing. It's just literally wrong. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if his, if his understanding of lobsters are as mm-hmm. bad as his understanding of marks, then What's this up with the whole like, lobster meme? I, I, I see a lot of comments of people making making this meme joke about lobsters, but I don't really yeah. – I'm not really sure what it's about. <laughs> oh, he's – I don't know, dude. He says that like – Basically, that we are lobsters, and he has all these comparisons about how lobsters have hierarchies and shit. I mean, honestly, it's you know, are you serious? It, yeah, I would look wow. into it more. But I mean, honestly, dude, it's just you know, a lot of you know, it's funny. It's like I know, like science is very trendy, and I in these circles or what people call science. And I'm not saying, like, of course, you need to teach actual science, and science is really important. But like. Yeah. Jordan Peterson is a good example of like you, especially somebody writing in popular culture who says that their work is like science grounded. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, step the fuck away from that because yeah. they're always giving you, even if it's right, they're always giving you like an incredible. They're giving you cultural interpretation. Yeah. But they're they're saying they're talking about three plus three equals six, but they're not. <laughs> they're saying like I found something in nature. That might have some objective qualities, but I'm building a story around it, if that makes sense. And just, you know, real quick, like, the dude has this conspiracy theory, which I don't know if he knows, but goes back to, like, actually, literally, like, far-right fascist and anti-Semitic uh, theorists. That's where the whole cultural idea... Cultural Marxism? Cultural Marxism, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, even if... So he's like, he's like, what happened was, at a certain point, <laughs> that communism was discredited. So... They needed to substitute class with race and gender. Now, first of all, already, like, if we're going to, you know, be real for a second, mm-hmm. in Marxism, class is not an identity like your race or gender. It's an economic functionality. Mm-hmm. And Marx didn't focus on workers because they were most oppressed. He focused because that's where there's the most contradiction in the economy. So, you know, I'm not trying, I'm just, it's like, I, the only reason I'm saying this is because, like, the dude is literally wrong. Like, if somebody says, like, here's how you play basketball. First, you get out your baseball bat. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> I think it should pause what the rest of the guy says is, right? Yeah. And then and then he goes and he's like, and then they replaced race and gender. And then that became cultural Marxism. <laughs> yeah. And now, like, I can't call trannies trannies anymore. Please like and subscribe. So and they do. he did that shit. Right. No, they do. But then the thing was, they definitely do that. Respect to the hustle. Although yeah. it is an easy hustle. But then he said, uh, so this whole idea of culture, so cultural mar- and postmodernists that he's talking about, which he doesn't understand anyways, <clears> what yeah. is worth, they started writing, you know, I don't, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, whether you're talking about the Frankfurt School or these French postmodernists, I don't even know what he's really talking about because he's not precise. Yeah. They I were banned. Like, these people were banned in the Soviet Union. Mm-hmm. They were not like read or promoted official Soviet ideology. Mm-hmm. And the only other, and I would say, you know, I think, yeah, there's some people on, on, on who call themselves left who have a very unsophisticated view of identity and economics. And they kind of play into his idea, but they're not like they're not they don't know what they're talking about either in some cases. So the whole thing, the whole thing is crazy. (laughs) I can't stand his voice personally. That's a big uh, difficulty in me just even listening to him.